that's the first step is always our stories. We have to tell the story from our perspective. And that's what Rizal did with No Limit and that's what Carlos Bulusan did with uh, uh, America's in the Heart. And I think, uh, I think it's a great way to teach students about our history, about um, our narrative, our, our, our experience here, our shared experience. What happened in 92? 30 years ago, the civil unrest, everything went down, LA cried out. And out of that, out of that destruction came this, uh, these grants from the federal government. They were called clean and green projects. And they were helping to green the environment or to green the urban scenery after all the destruction, after all the brown, after all the fires. This came about because uh, Social and Public Art Resource Center wanted a Filipino mural for uh, the community. And I was the intern working for Spark uh, to get this project started. As an intern, I was uh, intern uh, through Getty, Getty Internship Program. Um, and uh, Spark uh, had me uh, locate a community organization which is SIPA. SIPA was the one that was selected and then they chose walls they, they, they invited me to look at the wall for the uh, community garden that they had which is what where the murals is right now um, so that's how it started you know how it started with the wall we approached the Chuateco family and we asked Miss uh, Doctora Chuateco if we could start a community garden we asked her what she would want to name it she goes, I want it to be named after my daughter, Kim. So this, oh, the candy, 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 candy. So this became the Candy Chuateco Community Garden in about 1993. And then after the community garden was established with Dr. Chuateco's blessing to allow us to have, you know, uh, have presence, the mural project came about, I believe, through Spark. Through, right through the Social Public uh, Art and Resource Center under the direction of Judy Baca and then of course they they had the, the whole competition for it so yeah. that was SIPA's kind of role we helped access the community garden and therefore that wall which was the postal annex so before Ride Back Rants this is owned by the US Postal Service okay. as an annex a building and we thought they were gonna tear it down so he said, we better do something quick <laughs> so they don't tear it down. They did not ask for the whole wall to be painted. It's up to the artist. Okay. Because the budget's not enough to cover the whole wall. If I wanted the whole wall, I have to get funding to complete it. I have to get additional funding to get paints to complete it. It's only enough to cover a third of them, not even half. Okay. So it was going to be the, the taller part of the wall here. So uh, that's, that, that's the one that they wanted. A mural in the one that they said is the one that be that we are competing for okay. but if it's, it's the option of the artist to do the entire wall okay. what I remember is the process of it being done the process of it being painted my early memories of it was always a work in progress there at the different stage of the painting and uh, you know seeing what new face is about to pop up it was always mostly it was strongly a uh, community thing. And then we learned about, um, I guess, through both Anna and Joel Jacinto about this mural project that was going to happen and that they were looking for volunteers over the course of the summer when they were going to do it. And so we... Um, we took the trek um, every Saturday morning, consecutive mornings, I don't even know how many we went to, um, uh, to go down there and uh, help uh, Eliseo with the, the project. And so I have, actually I'll send you some pictures. I have some early pictures of um, the creation of the project and our involvement as, as young college folks. And they were recruiting uh, with the other campuses as well. But I think we took some pride for coming to the furthest away than any other campus. And yeah and being consecutive about it too. I, I went, I can't remember how many weekends, maybe a handful or a dozen weekends. But I was like, 
there's other people that, you know, Chris Ferreri is one guy and I, I have lost track of him who was yeah. really committed to the project. So there, there, there were a lot of people who were going uh, pretty frequently and were able to watch that this project come together. You know, what was cool about it too was that, um, uh, so uh, like contextualizing our involvement as young, young students, right? You're, you're, you're at the time you're seeking like your place in history as Filipinos, right? And so, you know, to be part of this project and the, and the history of the, of the Philippines to the, to the United States was one part of it in terms of the theme. But the other one was just sort of Los Angeles itself, right? Yeah. And the meeting of Los Angeles. It's where my parents first came to. Um, my father came to when he came from the Philippines, is in, in Filipino town. Um, it was where it was my, my mother who first went to New Jersey to be a nurse there and then transferred over, lived in Filipino town as well. And I, um, I, you know, we had the benefit of Uncle Roy, uh, who was with us back then, and he would do the tours of Filipino town. And so we, we had a chance to take a tour with him. And I, I'm kicking myself because he, he gave out this map of all these old, you know, establishments in Filipino town, like where the nightclubs and, and, the, and, and the restaurants. And I showed my dad that and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, those are places that we'd go to. And it's kind of cool to contextualize it there with Uncle Roy as part of that connection to that area and like me being here at chapman is where uncle roy went to school not orange county but when chapman used to be in la right so i love all the all the connections and and i remember when i was painting a mural i made it a point to lsa i was like i want to paint uncle roy's beard if i can paint uncle roy's beard then i think my task is done here as part of the mural it was a special time i think um the very first thing that i remember how important that was because it was actually the very first thing that the community was ever going to have in, in, in terms of even having a, some sort of uh, place here in historic Filipino town. Uh, we were reflecting on this newfound understanding of our history, of our heritage, of the, our rich culture, the revolutionary spirit, you know, the, 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 the struggle of those who have immigrated generations before us that have made it possible for us to access higher education and that American dream. To say that um, this mural and the, the place that it, it, uh, is, enshrined, is it enshrined, is sacred ground for Filipinos in America. Absolutely sacred ground. Um, it started with the discussion with Eliseo and he's, he's been wanting to update the mural because it was full of um, graffiti and, and some of them really nasty, um, anti-Filipino, um, graffiti. And so we were talking about it. He said, he doesn't, you know, he, he's got a little bit of money, but it's not enough to hire people to help. Um, he said it may, may take one or two years. And, and we, we were just discussing this and I said, why don't you come to my class and talk about it? And, um, let me see if I can get a service learning credit instead of having the students do all sorts of paperwork, you know, writing papers on this, writing papers on that, is to give them an actual experience of, um, that they can talk about. And um, so he came, he, he spoke. Um, it didn't happen that semester because I had to get it approved um, the next semester, I did. They even modeled for, um, you, if you see the tank during the um, 1986 people power, that's them um, modeling, pushing the tank. And the lower portion, um, that's new. They added names of, um, of, of folks that were um, part of the Phil Am immigrant experience. And and they helped in that. They wrote the names. Um, it's, a, it's a good starting point and say, this is where we came from um, when I bring my students there. And, and then we, we walk through every, every, every section 
and point out who that person is and what is his relationship, her relationship to the community, to being uh, a Filipino American. What does that mean? Um, and um, it, it, it's just made a big, a huge difference in the, in the lives of um, the students um, and their families. They start bringing their families there. Um, I mean, for example, um, one of my students, and I think you saw this in the video that I sent you, he, she was shocked. For the, she didn't even know, but she saw the Rockefellers there. She was a, uh, a nie the niece of um, one of the members of the band, and the Rockefellers in the 60s were huge. Dinah, Dinah Shore had them in her show and everything, a, a group of Filipino kids, you know, uh, performing in national TV. And um, she, she was just really shocked and happy to see that. And then she brought her family there. And they were also shocked and, um, and so on. So I think it, it has a, um, an explosive um, and, and very impactful um, effect on Filipino Americans and their families. History has always been like very interesting for me as an art form because I love the idea of like how much detail someone put into there and like the meaning of an painting of an art piece. And so um, I think for me with this mural, it's like you can't find this mural anywhere else. It's like the access to Filipino history in a way that's like, you know, like European history it's so limited, it's so small. It's like, it feels so sacred to know about the land history. I remember being able to recognize the Louisiana history and like um, Stockton because I just had one class in Asian American studies and we were reading Don Mabalo's book. It still doesn't, it's still not the full encyclopedia of what the mural encompasses. We knew that we wanted to do engagement photos in LA. Um, and really, LA as a whole has, has been part of how we developed as individuals and as a couple. Um, because in our whole uh, wedding planning and executing of it, we really wanted to center um, our Filipino-ness, right? Our, our Filipino identity. I, I think it was just natural for us to include something that was that has been such a big part of our uh, our growth um, as adults and as a couple. Um, so many aspects of our relationship are tied to Filipino-ness and that this wall captures um, you know, aspects of the farm worker movement. Um, there's Victoria Manalo Draves there. Um, my last name is Manalo, even though we're not related, you know, just that all of these little tiny and tiny things um, kind of make it, I don't know, like a good fit. <laughs> Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah. What's the most Filipino thing? Historic Filipino town. Okay, what's the most Filipino thing in historic Filipino? The mural. <laughs> so it's like the most Filipino of the Filipino thing that represents us. And so we just had to go to, it's sort of like um, a pilgrimage. We had to go to the place where our people, you know, started. And for me, it's like, it's personal because my family was there. My, my Nana's house was on Carondelet, a few blocks from the mural. My dad went to Belmont High School, right? Like right down the mural, <laughs> like down the street. So for me, it's a personal connection that I had to, we had, I had to go to back to my roots and then my roots are, are now Aaron's roots, which is now Amihan's roots and that we are rooted in Filipino town. I want that as part of our, you know, our, our romance and, and our love. And I want that as part of our trajectory that we will never forget, um, like who we are as a people, but also our family story. get there at nine and then we'd work till about 11 we'd take an hour-long break 
and then uh, work from there till it was uh, till the sun started to go down a little bit. It was so hot. I have so many memories of just like buying ice cream from you know the pal uh, paleteros there, yes. just eating it because it was absolutely steaming. Um, these I don't know these neighborhood kids came over and they asked if I could teach them how to paint, and I was like. Okay, and I just let them help paint portions or sections of the mural for a little bit before they got bored and ran off again. My favorite part of the mural is where it has all the names because you can see my parents' names and then you can see my name. So it's like two generations of people who've worked, who are related and have worked on this mural. I think it's brought us closer. Um, it's kind of weird to think of them as college kids just because, you know, they're my parents. Seeing the pictures that Eliseo brought and also seeing their names just kind of made it more real for me, like more substantial, but like, oh, these are my parents. They're people. They're like actual real people, not just like figures that watch me as I go about my day. I like to think of it a kind of as a time capsule in a sense, because not only does it hold like the memories and the records of, you know, history of Filipino Americans, but it also holds a more literal history of Filipino Americans, like our presence here in the form of our names on that wall. I mean, the, the whole space is not just about the mural, it's also about the park. I mean, if you notice, I made sure that the Dapai, uh, which is a gathering place for stories, mm -hmm. uh, is right there where Larry, uh, Carlos Bulusan is. And also, Carlos Belus is another intentional device where I, I shifted his timeline. <laughs> I moved him far, farther from where he should be, all, all the way to the to the very like sort of sort of the the beginning of history, where he's right between City Hall and the, uh, the book he wrote before Pancho Villa. He should be all the way there to the 40s, but I put him way before the 20s, just because I have intended him to be the storyteller. Well, I wanted them. I wanted that. Uh, I wanted uh, the general population uh, to be able to have this in their, the image of the mural in their imagination when they think of Filipinos. That when they think of Filipinos, they see a Filipino, they see this image in their mind, the, the, the image of the mural, because then our 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 stories are lifted to a, a, an art, a work of art that 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 you know. It, it, uh, that kind of elevates all of us. I really think this mural, the way it is, and the way it's um, evolved over the years, all the additions, truly captures our um, our experience in the Philippines and here as an immigrant community. My parents worked on it, I worked on it. It just, it's definitely, it's part of me now. That's something that I'm not too mad about. Everything that happened in front of the mural, all the faces and all the people, the traffic, those are the same people that are now supposed to be captured in mural. There's a mural that's becoming a backdrop of the future people who will become the subjects of the future murals. The emotional hub of Filipinos in in Southern California is for sure Filipino town. And the emotional hub of that is for sure the mural. So it's like, that's like undeniable. The, 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 the course of the mural has run, run its course already um, after, the, after I do the third and final one, because I, I would say it's enough because uh, we should do other murals.